So I promised I would do a snow video. So here it is. This is what's happening in Idaho today. Cold, snowy. And you can hear the crackle of the snow. It's really kind of cool. So this is our backyard. <laughs> all covered in snow. We don't have a lot, but who knows by the end of the day. So this is for you, Jan. Love you guys. It's Amy at Crafty Cat. So you can see here I've got a few things um, that are different from what we normally work with. <laughs> These are my needle felted pieces that I've done um, most like this one um, I did, gosh, it has to be close to four years ago now. I should have dated it, but I did not. But anyway, um, needle felting starts with wool roving, which is just the wool that's been cleaned and combed. And it usually comes in balls or, um, you know, just sections of loose. Here, I'll show you. So for example, this is wool roving. This is one I've taken apart, but a lot of times you'll see them places all rolled up into nice little balls um that's just sort of how they come so if you're looking for it but it's it like i said it's wool that has been cleaned and combed out you know so it's all you know, kind of going in the same direction and all of that and so then you take barbed needles like this and this is really hard to show but there's little tiny barbs on each one of these needles and so those barbs on the needles grab <clears throat> the barbs that are naturally on the wool fur and when it grabs it it pushes them together till they get tighter and tighter felted um so that's that's how you do it i mainly use that one and a single needle and i don't even know the sizes <laughs> anymore because it's just like i said it's been years since i've done much of it at all uh, there are some earlier videos where I did do some things for um, covers of journals, and we'll do something kind of like that today together. But, uh, yeah, I just can't even remember the size of these needles. But they come in all different sizes, and you can buy packs of them. I like this one because it's got this squishy rubber tip on it. It's just easy for me to hold on to and grab because you kind of you do this sort of thing and it just felt that. It just brings those fibers tighter and tighter and tighter. So for example, I bought this pack, which is great. I just like the rubber tip on this one. But um, there's, it says the one, number one is 36 gauge, which is a smaller needle, which is probably pretty close to what that one is. Let me see, yeah. So I would say this one's probably a 36 gauge, roughly around there. And then it says red is 36, green is 38, and I don't even have a blue one anymore. I must have broken it. That does happen. Um, sometimes you'll, yeah, so see, the larger the needle, the more, like, it's obviously thicker, and it uh, gives you an effect faster, but sometimes you don't want... I don't know how to explain this. Like when I'm poking, I don't know if you can see, but it's making an indent line, which I did do with this a little bit, but this one's just making it more like it grabs onto the barbs and pulls them in um, tighter, faster. So that's what I would say about a larger needle. I, I like to stick with that. I'm not sure why this one isn't able to go down in there better. But anyways, um, I like to stick in that more of a 36 gauge myself. I think these are even smaller and I don't even know what these are, but there's a bunch of them together. So obviously this is gonna give you like a faster felting as well with all those, with five needles in there. And this is a great little tool because it, um, that pushes back, but you can lock it. So if you wanna you know, put it in a bag or something to take with you, you're not gonna get jabbed the whole time and then also I think this one the yeah this comes off 
and it's either got replacements or yeah you can get replacements or take out the needles and replace them so see they're just set down in there all five of them so you can take them out and put new ones in like I said it's been a while since I've made anything so some of it's kind of lost to time as far as what I remember but um definitely like riding a bike I mean if you've done it before it's something you can pick back up real easy but anyways um so what I've made recently and I posted them on Instagram and Facebook are these little gnome guys <laughs> they're a crack up and I've also made some mushrooms so those are fun and then like I said I made him years ago and I also made uh, the the Grinch face um, as a tree ornament so this is just a piece of um, embroidery thread floss whatever but uh, this is all felted this whole piece is felted I've done pieces where I put in this one's all felted as well where I put in like um, plastic uh, pins for eyes and things like that like teddy bears uh, so let me see if I can find one these type of pins I've used for eyes because you can um, snip them down if you need to like if you're doing a smaller piece but you can put them in and uh, put a little glue on the pin itself and when you push it in you know then you can have little eye plastic eyes like that I've done teddy bears like that so there's lots of things you can do and obviously like this tree is not felted but I did put a little felted uh, pot around the bottom because this was a tree that I just bought at like Hobby Lobby or whatever and I put some uh, glittery wrap around it and then this is uh, rope but everything else is is felted and then it's got a wooden base but anyhow so I thought what we could do today just for a simple kind of how to or how I do it I've never like taken any classes I just sort of um, I think originally I watched some YouTube videos and did some reading like on Pinterest and stuff like that <clears throat> and you just got to play with it it's like so many things you have to play with it to figure out what's going to work best for you because what works for me may not work for you at all i have this foam mat that we're going to try today i usually use something like this that's much uh squishier but because i'm doing a flat piece using a um, cookie cutter in the shape of like a snowflake um when you do these you're pushing so many times directly into the foam itself that in this type it will stick and when you pull it up it just pulls um, out like it it'll start felting right into this and you can see there's all kinds of little bits of the fibers left over on here um, on that foam because I've used it for a while so we're going to try this and see if maybe it won't stick quite so much to this and I just have some roving and a piece of paper um, this isn't white white I'm sure you can get white this is like natural is what they would refer to this as because it's just like a natural wool color it's not dyed or anything it's just the way the wool comes so you're gonna kind of just you you don't need giant clumps of it um, a lot of times I just add little bitty pieces you know to get started but uh, you you would put it in here, and I think I will turn these over just a bit to kind of scooch them in there. And I'm sure there are, probably are experts and videos that they do um, do it differently. And like I said, I just taught myself. So if I'm doing something not right, I apologize. I'm not um, I'm not an expert at this. It's just something I taught myself how to do. So. I mean like I said I read some things and did some stuff like that but and you can see I'm lightly doing this I'm not jamming it all the way down to the glass mat you know I'm just kind of you don't have to do that all you're trying to do is get those fibers to come together so jamming it all the way down to the glass mat isn't going to make it happen any faster and it'll probably just make your felt stick to uh, the board that you're working on so basically what you're doing is you're just coming in here and getting all the little spots that you can because the better you do with that the more detail you're going to have and you can also once you're done doing this um, you can 
go in and uh, make your details more prominent and I'll kind of show you that this this is a very slow process and this is why I didn't do this when I first started as you know four videos because um, it's just it's kind of like watching ice melt honestly it's just one of those things it takes a really long time and obviously if I come in with this bigger one oops it helps if you unlock it Amy I just don't want to hit my metal thing so I'm just kind of doing the middle I'll get a little bit faster but you see it's just a very slow slow process so what I'll probably do is after a minute here I'll stop and um, kind of work on it a bit on my own and then come back because I know that this is um, kind of you know tedious and irksome <laughs> it can be very eh. but um, a few little tips oh and you know what? I didn't even say hi and how are you guys doing and how's your day going I hope it's going good <laughs> I linked on the front of this video um, I was out in the snow and it's snowing right now so I did do a little short video of it snowing in our backyard um, it's probably a little bit hard to tell because it's all kind of foggy and white like it's just white out today <laughs> so I don't know if you're gonna you can see the snow coming down but you know what I mean it's not like oh you can so crisply see the snow because it is just kind of a white um, day today because it is snowing we woke up to snow and they um, canceled school for you know the grade school and high school kids which I thought was funny because my son always wanted that you know he'd always like all the little tricks in elementary school he'd put a spoon under your pillow or I don't know there's all kinds of cockamamie crazy things that uh, kids do because they think it'll you know make them have a snow day <clears throat> well we always got snow and very rarely the only time we uh, had snow days was we called it snowmageddon because I seriously <laughs> it had been a very long time since I'd seen that much snow and I grew up in a very mountainous snowy place and we did we did we did have that and I do remember it but um yeah it was it was really a bad winter and I think this winter is gonna kind of it might be a little more spaced out so I don't know that <clears throat> we'll have like a whole month of just insanity but yeah I think it's going to be a kind of an icky winter around here it's been super cold and we've had quite a bit of snow already which very frequently we don't really get a whole lot of snow until January I mean you'll get the dustings here and there and whatnot but not much of anything in there already got the um, ski resorts open there's just some little threads in there that are red <laughs> from making the gnomes and stuff but yeah so snowy day here and I'm working on that snow journal or wintry like journal so I figured it might be fun to do one of these oh and I'll show you really quick <clears throat> have some little snowflakes that my sister crocheted almost like tatting there's that's such a tiny needle that she uses but anyways that goes in there and then this is my cover it's denim and um, more crocheted pieces for my sister and these are felt snowflakes from mustache so there's that uh, ready to go so I am sort of working on it when I can but I've sort of as you can see started making some things for gifts and whatnot so um, yeah it's gonna get few and far between here from now until Christmas just because got other stuff going on right <clears throat> so yep you just keep going like this <laughs> and of course you can make it as thick as you want I kind of want this one a little bit thinner sort of like the snowflakes that are already on the cover you know a thinner piece that you could use in a journal in a journal or on the cover of a journal you may not want you know obviously like the thickness of the gnomes or something like that because that isn't going to work great but 
so yeah you just kind of keep adding um, the wool fiber like that and you keep poking at it <clears throat> yeah this is hard to use this one in here because it keeps batting hitting the sides you can buy all kinds of different uh, needle they have like wooden handles that have multiple needles in them and <clears throat> there's lots of lots of different styles these are just the ones that I use that doesn't make it right or like I said right for you you may find that you like something completely different better um, it's really a thing I think you gotta sort of play with on your own to figure out what in the world you know it's just that kind of a craft and I'll show you in just a minute. I just want to get in here good because I'm noticing like it's really thin up in the tip of that star or, you know, a little point. And when I pull this up, I'll bring it up closer to the camera so you can see. And I am, you can probably hear me touching the sides. <clears throat> you just don't want to be jamming it really hard because, you know, then your needle could possibly break because this is metal. And I mean, it happens sometimes they get bent or whatever. Um, I've also stuck them all the way through my fingers. So it might be a good idea if you're real, like <clears throat> squeamish about that kind of thing or whatever, you may want to like get the little finger protectors they sell those or even like a thin leather glove or something like that I just go for it I mean I, I did the other day when I started up again I ended up putting on a finger protector because I was just stabbing myself left and right it's probably a good idea to do when you're first starting <coughs> sorry I have a frog in my throat today but <clears throat> yeah, you just got to kind of play with it and you get better at judging obviously where your hand is, but I've gone all the way through my thumb. So yeah, it, it happens. You just got to really be careful. And like I said, if you're real bothered by that idea, then you might want to get a glove or something like that, finger protectors, if you decide to do something like this. <clears throat> Because these are sharp <laughs> and they are barbed so it doesn't feel good this is kind of a good way to start because you're going you know within a confined area you're less likely probably to stab yourself but it's possible like I said I've done it I'm thinking this little one might need a little more. I know this is super boring to sit and watch me do this, but... <clears throat> yeah, we still don't know anything about the those poor kids up in Moscow where my son goes to school. And he doesn't, he doesn't hear anything either. He's not, like I said, he's not in a fraternity or anything like that. He didn't know... <clears throat> those beautiful kids but oh my goodness but um, yeah I mean he's just trying to finish up his semester and he you know they don't hear anything either <clears throat> so I don't know anything about that just praying for them to find that person so that the families can have some closure and just the kids too up there <clears throat> I mean, it's it's a psychological ordeal. It really is. And I guess you know they're encouraged, obviously, to stay in groups and and that. So that's kind of what my son and his friends have been doing. But. <clears throat> Crazy times. I always say I wish people could just leave each other alone. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Just leave people alone. <clears throat> if you don't like them, stay away from them. 
I don't know, it's just so crazy. You can't always get your way. Like, that's just life. <clears throat> I've mostly been listening to stuff about that, news and whatever, and just <laughs> like psychic readings and I don't know I find that stuff fascinating lately anyway like I was telling you guys I get watching those crazy shows but um <clears throat> yeah it is pretty amazing all right so see when I pick that up but now this is going to be stuck there and you can see like the edges aren't really looking very finished I mean it looks kind of like a starfish or something <laughs> So you can make starfish using this too. <clears throat> you just use orange or whatever. But so then you're going to want to go back in and try to get those corners neatened up, which is tricky because this is a metal. But I don't want to make it a whole bunch thicker than it is. Um, so I really just want it to get felted, you know. probably pause you guys for a minute until I get it where I want it and then I'll bring you back when I pick it up and it is going to be a, it kind of stuck and so you got to be gentle you don't want to just rip it up because it'll stretch it out weird and I mean it's going to get a little wonky from pulling it up but you can usually fix some of that and you can flip it over and lay it back down and put the cookie cutter back on it which is what we will probably have to do so I'll pause for just a minute and I'll keep kind of trying to make sure I get in all those little spots and then I'll be right back okay so I think I'm to a point where I can pull this up it's pretty pretty well felted now I don't know how easy or difficult this is going to be because like I said this is the first time I've used this particular foam and you'll notice when I just lifted that one, I feel like that's thinner right there. So that's something I was going to mention too, is um, while I was felting this, I didn't just felt it. I kept adding little bits here and there where I felt like it was thin. And so right there, I'll probably have to add some more. But for now, we're just going to pull it up. And you can totally see the, the design there. And then see when you flip it over how it's all like fuzzy, goofy looking. So then what I normally do is put it back into the mold. And this isn't the best cookie cutter in the world, but um, as you know, cookie cutters are um, very simple shapes. So you're not gonna get like, you know, when I did, for example, this mushroom, you're not gonna get a, the detail that um, you would get making it on your own. But if to start out with, I feel like this is just a great way to start. And maybe you want to do like a gingerbread man or um, a heart or, you know, something like that that might be give you a little bit clearer shape because this to me sort of looks like a star rather than a snowflake. So um, it'll take some playing around with to get it to get to that shape. And OK, so it took me like a half an hour to get that to here. So I just want you to realize this is not like, oh, I'm gonna make um, something in five minutes. It doesn't really work that way. If you want a good piece, I mean, you can make something in five minutes, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it just, it is a time consuming slow process is what I'm saying. Um, I'll give you a little tip, like things like circles, like if you wanna make a snowman, for example, uh, it's easier to take the um, roving, the wool roving, and tie it in a knot to start. And that gives you that round shape. And you can kind of take this little extra part, bring it around like this, and you know, bring the other side around and start felting. That just makes for a quicker, easier circle. So that's just one tip. 
um, it's really just about sitting down and not rushing and I struggle with these myself because I get impatient with is it done yet is it done yet is it done yet this kind of thing I can sit and do this in my hand and I can see it taking shape and I can feel how much there is and how much more I need and all those kind of things so that works better for me this inside of here this is why I don't do a whole lot of these flat ones I really struggle with um, is it done yet is it done yet is it done yet <laughs> because I have zero patience so um, you know that's just something you need to think about and I really forced myself to really try to get this one really around the edges like I went around like this quite a bit to try to get some of that design in there and uh, just kept working it just kept working with it and trying to get the thicknesses the same but like I said there were spots where it could have been a little thicker and that's all by feel you really have to feel it with your hands it's really hard to tell when you're looking down into something like this whether it's getting the thickness that you want it to get but again I'm not jabbing hard because if I did I would break my needle on this metal so really it's just like go around and around and punch down and it's called needle felting in case I didn't say that clearly or whatever in case you want to like go look for needles or whatever needle felting and like I said I think 36 gauge is about what I like to work with but like I also said you need to play with some different things and decide if you like I like to work mostly with a single a lot of people work with multiples um, and obviously the big wooden handled ones with like five needles I think those are good for if you're doing a large project like there's people that do um, needle felted handbags and things like that and that's where I can see those great big ones being handy this type of work if you want smaller sort of pieces I feel like um, single or a small multiple I'm still saying 36 gauge for me I haven't really needed a whole lot of times where or had a whole lot of times where I felt like I needed a bigger gauge of needle to make it felt um, another thing is uh, the one awesome thing about this particular craft which isn't true for so many is that the cheaper the wool in a w in many ways the better because it's like you can feel the barbs and it just felt faster I'll give you an example hold on just a second so I don't need I got this locally and this was pretty inexpensive but you can see how it looks um, I don't know not super fine or anything it's it looks rough how's that it looks rough and I got this fairly inexpensively and that's what I used to do the top of this mushroom and this works great I mean it felt fabulous this white is sort of a medium price and it felt great as well this this does felt wonderfully and beautifully because it's all um, kind of ombre or you know changes colors um, but do you, I don't know if you can tell if you can see how smooth that is it's it's gorgeous wool I mean a, like a sweater or something out of this is <laughs> would be amazing because it is so so soft whereas this is like scratchy almost and you can tell when you feel them um, kind of how they're gonna felt this will felt I've made pumpkins out of this and and it, it felt but um, not as quickly and it's a little bit harder and Santa's jacket um, was made out of the red version of that orange and it's still super duper soft but it took a long time and you can see some of the needle marks well I mean it kind of gets to where you can see the needle marks no matter what you're using but um, yeah this this took me a really long time 
But anyway, that's just a little tip. Starting out, you might want to go with um, not as, just go for the cheap stuff, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it just felt quicker and it, it's just, you know, it's just easier. I mean, don't go for super duper rough where people can't even stand to like pick up and hold the piece. You know what I mean? Don't, don't do that. But uh, you don't have to buy like the most expensive, fanciest brand of wool roving that you can find. It's, that's not really going to make it better or easier. It's actually going to probably make it harder. So just get, um, you know, something like midway or whatever. I kind of like these marly ones like this. That's what I made that one gnome out of. Uh, they look a little bumpy and whatever. This is a great, and I just go on Etsy. I mean, I do, like I said, I did get the red locally, so I can get it locally, but um, I've gone on Etsy too for wool roving. And um, that's where I found that purple color, so. And that's all, all you do is just go, like I said, I've had mine for probably five years. I don't remember exactly which Etsy shop I used to do that, but there's lots of them that sell wool roving. It's not a super hard thing to find. And you might even have it in your area. I know um, yarn shops a lot, uh, a lot of people doing um, crochet and whatever, use wool roving yarn. So this made in yarn. This stage of wool is before you make it into yarn and a lot of people who do crochet or do those types um oh what is it called <sighs> oh my gosh anyway i'm just gonna say crochet uh will turn this like they have a spinning um wheel and they make their own yarn using this so that's a lot of times you'll find it in like yarn shops or that kind of thing. So if you have a local yarn shop, chances are they probably have some wool, wool roving. So just a little tip. That's where that comes from. And um, I knew none of this before I started this. I had no clue that people actually spun their own yarn. I have never really been into yarn crafts at all. My sister crochets, but I don't. Um, so I just had no concept of how all this worked, but I just learned by, you know, looking for wool roving and, uh, like I said, there's a place locally where I can buy wool roving and they have the spinning wheels and all that. So that is what this stuff is. But it, it's kind of awesome because you don't need the, the most expensive fancy wool roving. You can get fairly cheap wool roving and it needle felts great. So that is something to keep in mind. I don't know if this one's ever going to end up looking like anything. But you'd have to go and, you know, fix all these little indents and whatnot. So probably what we'll do is... Uh, I'll probably stop the video and I'll work on this some more tonight and then I'll come back in tomorrow's or the day after probably Thursday's video and show you guys what it looks like when it's all finished and I know that's kind of crazy because you'll be seeing this video on Tuesday but I usually do my Tuesday and Wednesday videos on the same day so I'm not gonna have this done yet but I will continue working on it and I will show it to you guys as soon as it's maybe something a little more interesting but yeah that's what I would do I would just go along and you can kind of see there it's getting an indent right there um, just to try to get it as close to this as possible so that's why I'm saying you might want to choose to make something um, that's a little more obvious as to what it is like a heart or a snowman, you, you know, snowman cookie cutter would be another way, but it's really easier almost to make the, uh, just the circles, the balls out of the roving and make snowmen as anything else. So, but anyway, this is just a good way to start because like, if you've never, ever done this at all, I would say a snowman, something very sim simple, like I said, with 
tying this into a knot and making circles, three different size circles or two different size circles or however you want to make your snowman. And, um, or a cookie cutter. Um, I started with pumpkins because it was fall is when I started and I guess I should have brought one of my pumpkins there I'll put away with my fall stuff I have my Christmas stuff out now so that's why I mostly have uh, the Christmas ones to show you guys but I think I have a picture on Instagram so if you go over to my Instagram which is crafty cat 72 I think there's a post recent like from fall this year where I took some pictures or a picture of some of my needle felted pieces um, that someone was asking about or talking about or whatever. Um, they had some and I said I made some too and you know that's really fun to do and she said oh I want to you know kind of see what you did so I took pictures and posted them. Um, I think those are on there. But anyway so this is just a very time consuming process. It takes me about two hours to make a gnome and um, I don't know how long it took me to do that mushroom because I kind of did it in stages yesterday like I would do part of it and then go do some laundry and then you know what I mean <laughs> like that kind of thing so I didn't really time that one but my sister was over on Friday and um, we just sat and chatted and I made gnomes and I figured out it takes me about two hours to make a gnome so they're really not something that you know I do videos on or really sell because I'd have to probably sell one of those little gnomes for like twenty dollars <laughs> and I know that's just not really generally what people are wanting to pay for it you know by the time I buy the wool which isn't super cheap and then if I want to get paid anything really so anyway I'm just saying because um, I did have people ask me in the past about making them and selling them but it's just it's just one of those things that's very time consuming so I kind of feel like uh, you know, it might be something you want to make on your own just because it seems sort of silly. But there's probably people that, that do them and sell them and are quicker at it. I just haven't done it in a really long time. I'm sure if you were doing them enough, you would get quick. But, yeah, that's how long it takes me. So just to, just to put that out there. So I don't know how much detail I'm going to get on this snowflake. But anyway. So I'll probably let you guys go with that. And if you have any questions, I'm always willing to answer whatever I can. But um, yeah, I just, I thought it would be fun to, to touch on this again because I started making these and they are fun. I do recommend it as a, a zen sort of, it's almost like coloring, you know, it's that um, you can kind of just get in the zone and work on them and add details and whatever I mean it's not I'm not gonna say it's easy like you know that's what I'm saying if you start with something like a snowman something that's easy a pumpkin um, something like that that you might have more luck and then obviously when you have luck you want to make more right <laughs> so I would just start simple don't and don't kick yourself because it isn't easy and I have done it for a while. You've seen seen the ones that I've made, even though I haven't done it in a few years. Um, I did make things for a while, is what I'm saying. So, and it's like riding a bike. Once you learn how to do it, you just do it. So, anyhow, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will be happy to answer. So, I thank you guys so much for joining me today, and I will show this on Thursday so that you can get a better idea of you know, what it might look like when it's done. All right. We'll chat soon. Love you guys. Bye now.